Welcome, welcome back YouTube. Atlanta to Dallas Aviation here with part two of the model reveal for the 1400 scale models that I bought at the DFW Airliners International show this past weekend. Uh, we, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do uh, all five models that I have here uh, in this video. So the largest of the five might be being shown uh, when I do my 200 scale um, video. So, but let's get started. We'll see if we can get through it. So, picking up where we left off. Boom. Airbus A320-200 jet blue spotlight tail with winglets. Uh, registration number November 805 Juliet Bravo. And this one is a Panda model made, quote, exclusively for West Coast Diecast, I think, uh, is the name of the store, West Coast Diecast. Um, if I remember, I will put that in um, the uh, description below, I guess, maybe. Um, but anyway, so on the back of the box there, you have some information about this particular aircraft. Um, now, RM Model Store, uh, which is evidently defunct now, had done one of these with fence tips. And this one's with winglets or sharklets. I can't remember what. It, I think Airbus called them sharklets. But let's go ahead and get into this. Um, so West Coast Diecast was at the show um, and had brought some of uh, some of these that were made for his store. And I went ahead and bought one. And I, I, this is one of two, actually, uh, one of two um, Jet Blues that I bought. Uh, even though Jet Blue has announced that they're going to have a new, kind of a new, even livery on the body, um, and maybe some updates to the tails that they do. Um, so I probably won't be getting this style of Jet Blue much longer, but. Um, It'll still be a while before JetBlue is completely uh, to their new scheme where the body is blue rather than white. Um, so I felt it was it was safe enough to do it and I'll tell you why I bought the other one uh, when, once we get to that reveal. Alright, so I'm going to use this box for my turntable. That way I don't I don't stress out the landing gear too much. All right. Let's get to the 360 on this boy, huh? All right. So there's our beautiful A320. And the, uh, IAE engines. Ah, I forgot to look to see what the name of this one was. I'll, I'll look at the box under a magnifying glass uh, after we take our. Uh oh, sorry after we take a good look at this. Oh, I was really close to this airplane to do the 360 for it. Sorry about that guys. Looked like some of it was coming out of the frame and stuff. Very nice. And uh, West Coast Diecast told me that uh, um, that he was going to be having a, uh, a high rise also made. So be on the lookout for that. If you uh, need a high rise or want, or want another one. All right. So let's take, uh, see how close we can get to this. Okay. 
That's probably about it. Alright, so there's the title of the airplane there, uh, right under the cockpit windows. Um, I'll look at, like I said, I'll look at the box under my a magnifying glass, so I'll tell you what the name of this plane is if you don't find out before I do. And the jet blue titles, if you weren't already, uh, when they go to the blue fuselage, the jet blue titles, they're going to be similar to what you see here, but they're going to be a little bit bigger and they're going to uh, take up this whole space. Uh, as I understand it, it's going to take up the fir the whole space between the L1 door uh, and either, like on this smaller version, either to the exit doors or um, I believe the 321s have a L2 door. So it'll be stretched completely in between whatever the first two doors are, make it a little bit more prominent, but it'll be white letters on on blue fuselage if you haven't already seen uh, the news on that and there's the beautiful spotlight tail very nice All right, let's get this one aside. Let me take a look at this and see if I can see what the name of this plane is. Uh, yeah. It looks like it says you had me at blue. So I think that's what it what the name of that airplane is. I'm going to leave that box out to use as my turntable. So don't get confused. All right, that's the second one. Second JetBlue is another prism tail. Um, this one's reg number is November Niner 42 Juliet Bravo. And why did I get yet another one? Well, we got a uh, our 200th aircraft sticker. Um, that will be in this part of the fuselage when we look at the at the model. Uh, but it'll be really small and I won't be able to see it on my on my camera and the other thing that makes this uh, special is that supposedly this model was put out specifically for the DFW uh, airliners international show so it's um, we'll well we'll see uh, just how exclusive it is um, but they were just about all gone by Saturday. I think there were only two more left. And uh, they said they had brought a pretty decent amount of them. So uh, we'll see how, um, how uh, exclusive they actually were. And here's the uh, NG item number, 13055. Um, uh, the... Uh, I don't think the uh, the Panda exclusive model I do not see an item number on that and I, I don't think that's all, all that surprising of course and then this the name of this one uh, is um, Wow, that's really small even on the box. Uh, I can't quite tell. It looks like the first word is Mona, but I can't make out what the fret, maybe Mona Fresca? Does that sound right? Uh, let me know in the comments, because um, I'm not going to look this up until, uh, since these are single shot videos I don't have time to look at my phone real quick and look it up so um, anyway 
And the nice part about buying this at the show was I was able to inspect it before I got it. I, for whatever reason, I don't know about you, but I have not had a lot of luck with like aerials and engines and landing gear uh, on jet blue specific um, air buses for, from any manufacturer. I, I just do not get it. There's, there's pretty much something wrong with every single jet blue model that I have. Uh, you know, something as simple as just a missing antenna to broken, just flat out broken off engines that you, that's extremely difficult to glue without making a mess. So anyway, let's get into this. Less talking, more doing. Time for our 360 here. Don't have too much to say about this. Um, but like I said, um, I have at least two other um, registrations that have prism tails so I'm a little bit tired of prism tails uh, but this was supposedly an exclusive for the show um, so uh, as a true collector uh, I felt like I needed to go ahead and get it then let's get into the up close let's see how much closer it'll let me get should let me get a little bit closer here that's usually about as close as I can get let's see yeah yeah it doesn't like that one all right so that's as clear as I'm gonna get it <coughs> so the title of the aircraft uh, right up here below the cockpit windows like it always is uh, we got got your jet blue titles between the L1 and L2 door um, the IA engines with jet blue on it and uh, on this model uh, they also put jet blue on like on the top inside top of the engine so like if you were looking through the window you could see the engine and it would say jet blue there so it is there um, moving back you can see well actually you can't really see it let me do this so there is the our tw uh, 200th aircraft sticker right under the window line and then your registration there and then get another prism tail so that does it for uh, our jet blue portion of of the program all right so Next we have yet another Phoenix model, uh, but it's a 767-300. Uh, now this says 767-300ER as if it was a passenger airplane. Obviously, Kalita Air uh, flying for DHL is a, a cargo freight. Uh, I do not know if this 
if this was a passenger turned into a freighter or if it was built as a freighter. Um, uh, so, and again, I don't have time to look it up on my phone. Maybe I should have planned a little bit more ahead, but I didn't. So, um, but this is obviously a 767-300 now freighter. Uh, the registration on it is November 760 Charlie Kilo. And this is another Phoenix model. Now, I don't know what this number here is necessarily, but there's an item number here in the barcode. So, as far as I know, this is a Phoenix 04373 is the item number. And I actually did not inspect this one. So, uh, I, need to, I need to take a look at this. Uh, interesting that <laughs> that looks like it's an inverted picture. Uh, probably meant to avoid copyright. But anyway, let's get into this. I got this one mainly because um, I see a lot of these on the live stream of LAX on airline videos live uh, so I saw it at the show and thought eh, I I should probably get this one so getting it unwrapped here looks pretty good rolling wheels are a little bit loose but I think they're okay ah you know what now that I'm looking at the uh, the actual model it definitely looks like it was a passenger plane turned into a freighter because it has the windows on there but they're like whited out uh, windows so this so I would I would guess that this is a former passenger uh, 767 300 that was turned into a freighter. Ah, let's get our 360 on our JetBlue turntable. Whoa, that's way too close. Okay, that was too close for the 360. Alright, here we go. The Kalita Air flying for as DHL on the 767 300. Turned into freighter. Maybe we, when we do our up close, uh, maybe you'll be able to see it on your screen if you're watching on a big, bigger screen. Uh, it'd probably be even better if uh, I didn't realize my camera was only uh, could only shoot 720 uh, uh, video. So, but hopefully we'll get a good focus on it, and you'll be able to see it anyway. Especially if you're seeing it on a big enough screen all right so there's our 360 oh actually a little bit less than 360 but I need to go ahead and move into this all right all right so those cockpit windows look kind of funky on the on camera but I'm kind of looking at it it doesn't look as bad in person as it kind of does on the camera so um, I'll give them a benefit of doubt there uh, there's your cargo door that engulfs the KAL of Coletta Air engines, wing, 
then we go into the DHL portion of that in your registration right above the L in DHL and then the rest of that is just yellow All right, so that leaves me, yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to have to, I'm definitely going to have to put my very large uh, military model in probably with my 200 scale uh, video because I just don't think I'm going to have time to do anything else but this next one. Oh, and I'm just opening it without telling you what it is or showing it to you. Alright, so this one, I do not have one of these. I don't have a representative of this airline. So, but I, I wanted to get a representative, uh, but what I really want of this is the uh, A350-1000, even if it's the One World one. Uh, I really was trying to hold out for that, but I saw this one at the show, and it doesn't have any, like, the f um, soccer uh, thing on it. It's just the straight-out regular livery, uh, and it's an engine model, so I know it's going to be good. Uh, this registration is Alpha 7-Bravo Hotel Golf, uh, Boeing uh, 7879 Dreamliner. And the item number is, um, well, oh, here we go. Item number 55050. So let's get into this one. This is another one I did not inspect before I got, which I probably should have, uh, but it looks like I dodged another bullet. I mean, if you're not going to inspect it when you have the chance to inspect it before you buy it, <laughs> uh, that it's just, yes, I'm about to call myself a moron for not checking that. So, anyway, so here it is, uh, the Cutter 7879 in just its normal livery, no, no special stickers, no special livery, none of that. Let's get our 360 going here. Right. Back that up a little bit so you get a, a glimpse of the whole plane there. And we are doing our extreme close up. Yep, 
Yeah, it's got to be the angle because the the cockpit windows on this one looks a little bit weird uh, on the video, just like the 767 uh, did. So it's just kind of the angle. So there's the distinctive nose of the 787. Cutter titles looking sharp. Got our engines with the cutter logo on it. And then Dreamliner in the white part of the, I guess that's a cheat line, uh, in the white part there and uh, right, right above that is the uh, registration and then I guess that's the cutter flag above the windows and then uh, so, so not that I'm particularly crazy about this livery but I do like their uh, I like their tail logo yeah I think that looks pretty nice um, and then your your uh, APU back there in the back just below the horizontal stabilizer looking really good so there you have it the next four and then like I said uh, I'm gonna do my military one I probably could squeeze it in but I don't want to totally rush it uh, so I'm just going to do that with my 200 scale uh, models and I'm going to kind of have my 200 scale models kind of ready to go rather than trying to get them out of the box and all that good stuff um, and waste time. So anyway, so that was another four of a total of nine uh, one 400 scale models that I got at the show. And then uh, we'll be doing uh, again um, the military model and the two 200 scale models uh, in uh, part three I guess we could call it part three uh, of the model reveal from the DFW Airliners International show that just uh, concluded yesterday uh, Saturday the 24th of June um, it was a really good time and uh, I hope I hope uh, if you're watching this, that you got to go and uh, let me know in the comments how your experience was and maybe what you got uh, while you were at the show and uh, were you impressed by uh, by any of the displays or or did you see the uh, the model contest um, any of those things or if you did you go on any of the tours and uh, let me know. I'd like to know. I didn't do any tours, and I wasn't. I saw the aftermath of the uh, uh, of the model um, contest and the picture contest, um, and those were kind of neat. I got a, a few pictures of that. Um, but anyway, uh, thank you for watching the video. If you like, please uh, leave a like and subscribe. And until next time, happy collecting.